my lord! Onurwa, my boy. Shouldn't you be in bed? <laughs> Thank you for your concern, my lord. But I have largely recovered from my ordeal, and I have naught but several scars to show for it, which I have been told some women may find appealing. I see. And to think I was worried sick over you. I'm not sure I understand, my lord. Well, let's put that theory to the proof, shall we? My, my, my lord? It would seem that a great many things have occurred in my absence. I thought I might begin to make amends by welcoming you in person. The messengers spared not their chocobos to bring us word of your victory in the grand melee. I cannot well describe our relation when we heard the news. It called to mind the day we rejoined the Eorzean Alliance, and I glimpsed hope rekindled in the eyes of the people. The Fury herself ushers us into a new era. Sir Emmerich, the time is now. Aye, that it is. Reconvene the conference and summon Vidofnia to Falcon's Nest. We will make peace with Freysvelga's brood and hasten this bloody war to its end. Yes, Lord Commander. I will send word to Artoirel and bid him resume preparations. Emanelaine, you will place yourself at your brother's disposal. He will be glad of your assistance. No stopping it now, is there? We should inform you Stola and the others. My dear friend, I doubt I will ever be able to thank you enough. But when the conference is successfully concluded, I damn well mean to try.
the appointed hour approaches. I... She begged leave to watch the proceedings. I saw no reason not to grant it. Should I choose to deviate from my prepared remarks, I ask that you trust in my judgment. Have I ever done otherwise? been since our peoples met thus, children of Thordon, even by our reckoning. Vidofnir, daughter of Hresvelga, we give thanks for your visit, and bid you welcome to Falcon's Nest. Our sire bade us hearken unto the whispers of our hearts. They spoke to us of a paradise lost, of bonds of brotherhood, which they yearn to see restored. Ours too yearn for such a restoration, and they have guided us here this day, that they might yearn no longer. Brothers and sisters, ye who stand as witness, hearken to me! Since the days of Eld, when the bonds betwixt man and dragon were sundered by our hand, our peoples have known only war. Bloodshed without end, losses beyond counting, and still we fought. And still we fought. Some wounds do not heal. The dead cannot be returned to us. But we the living can yet choose another course. Here and now, we can lay down this burden, this hatred, this vengeance. Our forebears fought not so that we could die, but that we might live. So let us honor their sacrifice and spare our children this death sentence. Let us gift them a new legacy, life. Betwixt our peoples yawneth a divide deeper than the deepest abyss, wider than the widest sea. Generations will live and die ere this divide is bridged. Knowing this, doth thy heart yet yearn for peace, son of Thordon? Look now on the legacy we would leave to our children. A dream of peace, inscribed in stone for generations to come. and at peace. 
the dream they shared shall be ours once more. is nigh, and all will be held to account. All will bathe in the flames of retribution. Till the coming of that day, look you on your sins and despair, for none shall escape my wrath. None shall escape my revenge! Seven hells! While he lives, we'll never know peace. Aye! There'll be no end to this war till Nidhogg is dead and gone! So let's kill the bastard and be done with it! Death to Nidhogg! Death to Nidhogg! Death to Nidhogg! <laughs> Death to Nidhogg! 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 Death to Nidhogg!
Forgive me. That took longer than expected. You seem puzzled. Oh, these. I thought something warming might not go amiss. It was not all that long ago that we sat here, you and I, in our very own falling snows, as Lord Horshvon called it. I still struggle to believe he is gone. And Azel too. I had such hopes for her. Master Matoya asked me what it was all for. Why we fight, and why we die. Were I still commander of the Braves, I would doubtless have replied, for the future of Eorzea. But I'm not that man. Not anymore. I needed a new answer. One that I could live with. And when I saw Estinian at the ceremony, I knew at last what it was. I do not want to be a man who sacrifices his friends and family for a cause. I want to fight for Astinian, and I want to save him. When Nidhogg leads the Horde into battle, Ser Emmerich and his forces will do what they believe must be done. That is their choice to make. Yet even if Ser Emmerich is willing to forsake Astinian, I am not. We must fight for him, for he is our friend and ally. We may struggle, we may fail, but we must try. We will. I know we will.
Of all the ways for it to end. Even before his transformation, I could feel the worm's hatred swirling about Estinian. The terrible, all-consuming rage. Enough to fuel a thousand-year quest for vengeance. It was all I could do not to run away screaming. But Ishgardians, nay, all Eorzeans, are made of sterner stuff. They face danger and death on a daily basis and understand what it takes to win a war. Think not too deeply on Master Matoya's words. Her intent was but to steal our resolve. That, and to remind us to look beyond these passing conflicts to trials greater still to the truth which hides at the heart of this world. So that's your aim, is it? You disapprove? Not at all. I believe it's traditional for the student to follow in the footsteps of the master. And you are so very alike. Change. That great inexorable wave was upon us, and soon all of Ishgard would bend to its will. For all our sins, for all our scars, the future for which we had long yearned was at last within our grasp. It would be bought at a heavy price. For in those twilight hours did Nidhogg cry out for vengeance, and his brethren raised their voices for the final chorus of the Dragonsong War. <laughs> 